I can't win for this game. I am just not. Why are we struggling so bad? I don't know. I am just not. Hey, everybody, go ahead and be here. If you're already visiting, let's go ahead and meet somebody you don't know. If you're online, there's a lot of you online today. I'm guessing you're starting 4th of July early. Hey, remember, we can hear you all. Well, that's right. Everything you say, can will be held against you. So, right now, take a minute. Meet somebody new. Go. So each week we talk about our MVP, B, or P, and this week it's our perspective, which is something, it's just been added recently. Yes, it is new. So what is our perspective? Training, coaching, consulting, and technology company, creating the culture and community where entrepreneurs thrive. So I love that we have visions and things we go for instead of just selling houses for the heck of it. So we have a whole goal on everything. And we have an onward agent services. What do we do? Hey, right? tell us what you like. Everybody, I'm back. That's yeah, okay. Never left. Just Katya came down here for a little bit. But just a weekly reminder for everybody: we have multiple different services to help you be better agents. Um, we do transaction coordination, marketing management, sign running, closing gift baskets. A really good question that Katya got last week about her newsletters is: does it have to be a twelve or an every month commitment, or can we kind of mix it up and specialize it however you want? And you can. So if you don't want a newsletter to go out every month, you want it to go out every quarter, um, you know, twice a year, every six months, just let her know and she can work it out for you. We can do any of that stuff that you want, however you want it. That's it's there to run your business the way you want it to. We're still a lot, oh, the promos are still going on. Yep. So talk to Katya about those. Our, our previous slide has not shown up for a while. Sorry. It's up. There we go. And we have a ton of vendors and affiliates. This keeps growing and growing. It does. So who do we have here in the room with us? Uh, Kevin, we'll start with you. Hello, Kevin Kohler with Allstate Insurance, helping them provide all the property and casualty needs there. Uh, former educator, so big on educating clients about the products for insurance. And then our office, we also do give a $20 referral for any conversation that we have with the customer. They don't have to do business, but we'll give a $20 gift card for anyone that you send. Thank you. Thank you. Christina. Hi, Christina Ferrante with 417 Home Loans, your living lady for life. Um, I don't know if you guys have felt it, but last week it really picked up. Um, my apps were four times what they typically are. Um, so it was insane. So I think it's coming, guys. It's going to get busy. Carl. Carl with Dogstone Home Inspection. You want to stop shop for all your home inspection needs? Um, working with agents, helping you set your clients' mind at ease to make the transaction uh, hopefully painless and easy for you all. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> Garrett, are you awake? I am. I okay, am. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, big, stretch. big stretch right here. Garrett Dollins, Meridian Title, where we close deals and open opportunities. Um, I also have some outside news. So I'm with YPN through the board. Um, we put on a golf tournament um, every year. Um, this year, um, we're going to be donating our money to Realtors Helping People. It's October 7th. Um, I just put out the flyers for both the teams and sponsorships. Um, you can go to my personal Facebook. You can go to the YPN Facebook page. You can see that. Sign up a team. Get a sponsorship. It is a ton of fun. It's packed full every year. We're going to raise $20,000 this year. That's the goal. So, um, and, and it's also going to be tax deductible to 501c3. So really cool this year. i um, excited to partner with them. So if you can get involved with that. So. Awesome. Thank you. Derek. All right, Derek Cheney, home loan expert with Mid-Missouri Bank, conveniently located right across the parking lot here. 
you know, to what uh, Christina said, it's uh, been crazy busy these last few weeks. Um, so that's good news for everybody, right? Uh, but uh, but yeah, here for all of your home loan needs. Awesome, thank you. And we have John with Legal Land online as well. Hey, hey guys, John with Legal Land title here. Hey, uh, just uh, we're actually working out of our Ozark office today. Um, if you don't know where we're at, uh, if you see Midmo Bank, go to the other side of the building. We're on the other side. Um, thank you, guys. All right. And each week, our, our vendors have a culture winner. Cindy actually stuck in last week after we've done the announcement, and she had a trophy with her. So I don't know where she's she's out doing some fun stuff today. So. She came in late last week, too, and she's just holding on to it I know. Again. She's keeping the trophy. So. That's how to keep it. And then our reminder, don't call people you're not supposed to. Do not get sued. Do not bring litigation among Keller Williams and Springfield. And last week's winner was Clayton Carson. And yeah, for our Asian culture winner, yep. here's what so, he said. So uh, this person that he nominated said, this person is a joy to work with demonstrating promptness, professionalism, and excellent communication throughout a transaction. Congratulations, Sarah Simple Tina Haro. You are oh. the trophy for you, and maybe he's getting an army man. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Out of a random closet. Here you go. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Well, the we're not supposed to store things in, but we do. <laughs> All right. And Don, Jim, any any broker stuff? Uh, well, we're approaching our date. Everybody knows what our date is. It's not uh, Andy's. It's something else. Uh, I think the one thing is just understand that the contract has some changes, but the changes aren't radical. The contract, it's a residential contract itself. The changes are on the side of agency and then commissions, and we're going to have several opportunities. I'm sure you've got slides up there, so we don't have to worry about that. And then we have a broker's meeting on the 11th with, with the brokers, which some of us will be there. And uh, hopefully they'll give us a little more clarity on a couple of the things on the agency or maybe on the contract. And, and, and then we'll be able, able to do that. But just be ready to turn it on. Just know that on the 29th, we're going live with those documents and you're going to have to be able to use those. It won't be that you can't use an old contract, but if you do, you know, you might give up compensation, which is probably not what you want to do. So just be, pre be prepared for that. And uh, it's, it, I know it seems radical. It's not. I mean, it's just, we're going to continue to do business the way we do business. We're going to take care of our clients. We're going to deal with the commission with our sellers the same way we've dealt with, make them understand that it's necessary. And uh, we'll move forward from there, but uh, just be prepared. Don't just walk into it, you know. Don't be shocked on July 29th when all of a sudden you go to DocuSign or DotLoop and the forms are different. Um, we've got samples up above the mailbox area. And if you have questions ahead of time, or want to go through a walkthrough with it, talk to Jim, Don, Rachel, me, anybody with the leadership team. We'll help you understand it. So when July 29th hits, you're just good to go. Um, so we're happy to do that with well, you. Well, we have a team meeting about that too, right? We, we yeah. do have a whole team meeting too. Choked on water, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for America's celebration. Uh, today is the 50th birthday of the Rubik's Cube. So if you know Mike, today is like another national holiday. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Rubik's Cube in front of my office. And if you ever need a stress thing, just come mix it up and I'll fix it for you. So <laughs> minute 46 was my record, but that was in 1981. So I don't know how to do that now. So, all right. Continue ahead. Yes. So if you are a broker and you still have a license, congratulations. That means you are new. Uh, and if you didn't, Jim Bolin will be our highest producing agent next month. So uh, for everyone that's not a broker, salespersons, you have by September 30th to get that renewed. Do not wait until the very last day because it is a two-step process. So for those of you that this is your first time, you'll go on, you'll do your 12 hours, you'll give it 48 hours approximately for it to update on the MREC website, and then you'll use the nice code that they mailed you to enter in to pay your fee. Now, if your address has changed and you have not told the MREC your address has changed, you need to do that now. Uh, it takes about 10 days for that to get updated. So we have a, yes, Amber. Question. Yes. Is this the first year I've got this? And I want to make sure it's not a scam and I didn't just pay somebody else. I got it through email this year. Has anybody else got it through an email? With yes. the I got it. That is common. Um, I saw one yesterday. It's the exact same thing. So you are totally fine. Okay. 
send you an email saying you can go ahead and renew on that port as well. And it could have the code on there too. But a lot of people just, you know, how many people have over a thousand emails in their inbox right now? Yep, I know all of you do. So uh, the mail is also another point. You get that until your all your classes are done. So you'll go ahead and get that card or that email now. So now you can go ahead and renew. Because some people have been done with their CE since last year. So go ahead and check your trash. Yep, check your trash. And if your address has changed, make sure you update with the MREC. Because it is that two-step process. Um, and it will be a pain to try to get that figured out if you wait till the very last minute. Yep, and if you still haven't done your CE, remember this code, KW1024, will get it all for you for $48. Do fair housing, do ethics, choose two other classes. Yep. It's that simple. While you're sitting on the side watching fireworks, you can do the classes. Yep. I wouldn't recommend that. Realtor slides, you get these each week. July 10th is coming up, Blue House Project, YP and Happy Hour, How to Raise Your AI Game, Forms and Revisions. So last week we went through this with a bunch of people in here. If you missed it, the next one is July 9th. This is where they'll walk through the forms. It's a, a Zoom slash webinar from the state. They've not put out the recording yet. They're waiting until they do all three and putting out the best recording. But the last recording is going to be July 30th. Our forms change July 29th. So if you have not done this yet, go to the July 9th webinar, go to the landing or any of the MR uh, websites and you can sign up for it there. And in your email, uh, Jeff Kester is doing an AE in the AM every Monday and Thursday for about 30 minutes. Um, there won't be one this Thursday, obviously yep. it's 4th of July. So we'll kick it back off on Monday, but it's about 30 minutes and every day has been kind of a different topic. And so um, I think he's gonna go into more of the pressing issues on this Monday. So you'll get in your email, you can register and it goes right to your calendar as well, yep. which is nice. Awesome. Uh, this was a stat that was on there for this last week. You get these every Sunday night. Use these things in all your social media and your marketing. Our calendar for July, it is jam-packed. We got all kinds of cool stuff happening. Um, anything we want to point out for sure? Um, so a couple of things uh, going into next week, we have free agent headshots. So if you are needing your headshot revised, feel free to sign up for that. I'm sure we have a slide for Real Estate Revolution. Yes, a lot of those other slides, we'll have other slides for. Um, team meeting on July 23rd, Jim and Don will go through the contract update for July 29th to the 23rd. This room better be packed or else we won't answer our phone calls from y'all when you have questions. That's right. Um, <laughs> but really, and then uh, really. I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Oh, um, July 25th from 10 to 12, we're doing a buyer and listing presentation workshop. So you can see we're having so many trainings in the month of July for you to feel prepared for the July 29th change. And anything in pink is a not regular class. It's a standout one. That's why Nicole put it in a bright pink color to make it alert your eyes. So, yep. and also this team meeting here is going to be kind of fun. Randy Little, former owner of PFI, is going to be with us. PFI started as a little building on where College Scenic and Chestnut meet. And he took that brand and built it nationwide. So he's going to talk with us about how to make your local brand into something bigger. So it's going to be fun. Uh, we don't, okay. that's so brand new. So we just got this finalized. Uh, Donnie Brookman and David Voorhees, who are with KWRI, they're head of all the tech. They are actually coming into Springfield to do a class. Now, it's not necessarily going to be a tech class. The one we have selected is they are going to be doing a class all around open houses. So we haven't had a really great open house class lately. And so we're pitching it, though, because when I say open houses, some people say, eh, I don't really do open houses or eh, I don't really work with buyers. But how many of you would like a listing from an open house if you posted it, right? Everyone's hand should be up, right? So that's our focus is how to have an open house with the intention of gaining a listing. So they will be coming in, flying in. They'll be here for two hours to teach this in-person training. Um, they've never been to Springfield, so I'm super excited for them to be here. We're taking them to Bass Pro so, and Andy's, Andy's Cashew Chicken. Villa, oh, yeah. Cashew yeah. Chicken, all the stops, right? No, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just the salsa, right? Because you can't get that kind of water anywhere. And, and sort of a tag on with that. We're going to have you have the instructions on how to do open houses. Yeah. You know, you have to have a buyer's agency sign for people. We're going to have all that info for you, too. So mark that. We're going to add in the KWIQ, which is yep. um, the kind of like chat GPT version of KWIQ. They're going to yep. add that into their presentation, too. Okay, Real Estate Revolution, this is almost sold out. We have 117 people already RSVP. Like, nice. Since Friday night, and this was at last night. So within four days, we have 117. Fire code is 180. Um, <laughs> we checked. 
Um, and it may be standing room only at this point. So if you are wanting to attend, I highly recommend signing up now because uh, I cannot guarantee that we'll have any more space in the next two days. Uh, this is brokerage wide. So we have agents from all other brokerages. We'll have um, strategic seller discussions. Wes Litton, Kelly Rabor, Diane Nicholas will have uh, wealth building with Zach Riggs, Justin Certifit, Samantha Richardson, and buyer agency with Carrie Worst, Chris, Chris Bryant, and Jen Davis. So power packed. It will be three hours. We will be going nonstop full of information. So I highly recommend if you are wanting to attend. Uh, oh, 120. So yeah, we keep growing. We <laughs> capped the tickets at 130, but we did call for fire code and they said 180, but that's going to be pretty tight. Um, so at if you, the library center, so just South at the Campbell. library center. Yep. So if you want to attend, sign up today. If you know of an agent that either here or somewhere else that you think needs to be there, send it to them and say, do not wait on this. Um, my worst fear is to have to tell people, no, you can't come to this training, even though it's going to be very needed. So, um, sign up for that. Look what else is going on. Yes. So, uh, we are hosting quantum leap here. Uh, so for those of you that have never attended quantum leap, um, I would highly recommend this class. This class has nothing to do with real estate, nothing to do with buyers or sellers. It's all about your life. Why did you get into real estate or what do you want for your life and your life's mission? Um, what is your purpose? And so we'll be going through a full day and working through that. Um, unfortunately, I'm not Gary Keller, so it won't be Gary Keller level. However, I think this could be super useful for it's a lot of you pretty good level in the anyway. moment. No, no. Um, so really excited about that. The class is free. So typically, if you're traveling to go to Quantum Leap, um, you will have to pay, but we're going to do this free. There is, this is through KW Next Gen, which is a 501c3, so it may ask for a donation if you'd like to donate, since it is KWRX Charity, mm -hmm. um, to give back to um, young adults between 18 and 29. Uh, but we will have that July 17th. And anybody yep. else that you want to invite, feel free to invite them. My goal is to pack off the training center. And mark your calendars. Third Hispanic Heritage Month party will be September 13th. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. We'll have more info coming on that, but go ahead and mark your calendar. It's a great client event to bring people to. The biggest thing is if you know anybody that would like to sponsor and be involved in this, let us know. Or if you have anybody that would like to do giveaway items. Um, we are working hard this year to make it a little bit different. So every person that attends has a passport in order to be eligible for the giveaway items to ensure that they go to every vendor that is on site. So if you are going to sponsor and you're going to have a booth, we'll make sure that at least everybody that wants to participate in the cool giveaways has to come by and see you. Yep. We're going to skip a couple of these things you know about July 29th. We've got that coming up. Uh, this is the new list of team meetings that's out everywhere. We're going to skip Mega Camp, although the gift, the guest tickets, we only have four of them left. So if you know somebody that wants to go from another brokerage, brokerage, get in touch with them. So we'll get more info on that. But we want to spend some time real quick talking about BOLD because that is an incredible class that's coming up. It stands for Business Objective Life by Design. And we wanted three different people to tell how BOLD affected them in different parts of their, their business. So Dan, when you first came in to- want them to come up here? Yeah, come on up here oh. real quick, come up here. Yeah. Oh. yeah, we'll bring all three of you up. Yeah. Let's welcome Dan, Elise, and Jennifer. Dan, you when you first came yeah. into and remember you got to be over here so the people oh, we got to be over here. Yeah. People want to see you on camera. People so you did bowl <laughs> when you first started real estate, correct? Uh, I was in the first bowl that was ever in Springfield. So what but did, yeah, I was probably four years in. So what did it do? What how did it help you? Um man, so many uh how did it help me? I think it just systematized for the first time ever what my actual day was supposed to look like in real estate. So number one, it removed a lot of limiting beliefs because we talked about number one, it being about mindset first and about activity second. Um, I hadn't really had anybody put that mindset like in guardrails. And I, I don't mean to actually put limiting beliefs on mindset. That's not what I've tried to do. But harnessing this can be challenging for me. The, yeah, Shanna. Maybe. <laughs> and so I'm here. And so it kind of it drove this focus here of if I focus on this for this amount of time, I can have anything else I want to have. And that was the mind. That's what I mean by like harnessing this, right? So I was like, well, I want to do all this. Like, well, if I just come here and do this, then I get all that passively. So I think that's that's kind of what came through uh, the first bowl. And like I said, that was probably. 13 or 14 years ago. So instead of just being a realtor sitting there waiting for somebody to call you, it gave you a system on how to build a business out of it. It gave me, um, it harnessed knowing what activities were the right activities and what weren't the right activities. Meaning I, I knew what I needed to do first, thus that the other things I could do later. It was like it narrowed what my one thing was <laughs> to X amount of contacts, X amount of appointments, 
uh, obviously the accountability from the group setting, et cetera, but that had never happened around here. And I think one of the challenges to this mm -hmm. maybe is how normalized almost old has become. Yeah. Right. And I don't want anybody to take for granted the fact that it's special is different every time. Number one is proprietary to us, but it is different. And, and you uh, have, has anybody ever like arrived and like you just mastered bold, conquered it? <laughs> oh, great. So then why would you stop? Has anybody arrived and conquered real estate no. or mindset <laughs> or activities? Shannon has, but. Hey, kidding. Great. <laughs> great. So she'll have registrations at the end and she'll have like, <laughs> but you see my point is it's not about, it's not about, it's not, uh, yeah, I've been there. I've done it. It's about the journey that every year or month or day we're consistently trying to get better and better and better. And I know we've said this a bunch of times and I don't mean to be cliche with it, but every time you show up, you learn something different and you take something different away or they tweak it just a little bit. So I hear something different or I'm a different person when I show up or I had my cup of coffee first. So I retain something a little different, but obviously we know it's mindset and activities, but I never had that before. I never had the focus of these are somebody just saying, just go do this and you'll get these results, yeah. right? And I think a lot of us, and I'll look at Shanna, I'll look at Rachel, yourself, and I know that the most consistent conversation you get from agents that come in when they're behind goal or they're not in a great spot and they're not a whatever, it's, I don't know what to do. I don't have enough leads. I don't write, has anybody ever heard that before? Anybody ever said that before? We all have in every business across the deal. And it, it, and it is no different. And you're not coming, it's almost like a, regurgitating the same answer of, well, if you actually just do these activities, odds or not, you'll just be successful. You'll just fall into transactions. Yeah. You're like, well, I want leads. Great. Do the activities and see the reality is that people want what you have without being willing to do what you did. And this is part of the doing what, doing what we did. Cool. So, so at least you took it last year. How many years have you been in real estate? Um, this is my 10th year in real estate. And what happened when you took it last year, even though you've had it before? Um, I've gone four times, I think, prior to. This was my fifth. Um, this time, I just, I mean, also the bold coach was a friend of mine, so that would have been super embarrassing. Um, <laughs> but I just dove in. I was I was there. I And it really didn't matter to me what, um, like, the day was going to look like at bold. I just knew that I was going to show up, and I was going to do the activities, and I was going to actually, like, I did, and I did it for me. This, like, a lot of times, you know, because especially we work on mindset, I... You know, all right, I'm going to do this for my kids. I'm going to do this to grow my business. I just wanted to do it for me personally. I didn't, I'm like, I've been enough that I don't necessarily have to take bold, but, and I've already signed up for this next bold because what it's done for my business by sitting in the room, the activities are the only thing that's going to, that's going to make or break and change your business. And by sitting in that room and doing those activities and doing the activities outside of the room throughout the week, that's what changed my business, especially during that time frame. So uh, that's what, that's why I'm going again. So you said your business changed. What happened in December last year? Close this. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so much better about that. <laughs> that. There's no try. I know. Yeah. There was no try. Um, I closed a lot. She tied for sixth in the region on a total top individual teams closed units last December. Yeah. Because of the things you did mm -hmm. in bold in August, September. Yeah. And the activities that I did, Bethany is amazing. She wrote down some notes for me. Um, <laughs> I had eight total buyers from that, seven listings and uh, 2.7 volume. Amazing. Um, yeah. It and, yeah. It was a, it was a, not a bad Christmas. So yeah, it was a big month and it, you know, the thing is, is that now that I've done that level of activity, I know what doing that level of activity takes. And that's, what's really changed for me is what, when my business slows down in some ways, it's like, okay, I'm distracted. I'm not like, I know how to do it and I know how to focus. Mm -hmm. I had a call with Bethany's coach last week or the week before. And I just was like, all right, screw it. <laughs> I got there. <laughs> and, and I just sat down and I just started doing activities. And I, from that, I've already got two more buyers. I've had buyers consultation, but so now I just had my third buyers consultation and I just closed on a listing. The buyer on my listing called me to sell their listing because I did such a good job on my listing. So it just show up. If you show up, it shows up for you later on. Cool. Jennifer. Last year, you were at the Blue Company when you signed up for Bold. <laughs> what, what, what did Bold do for you? 
about uh, well, first of all, this gal here, <laughs> I ran into her at High V and I told her that you had invited me. And she looked at me and she goes, You should go. And I was like, I I felt so like I was betraying the blue company. <laughs> and, we talked through that. We talked through that. <laughs> and, and yeah. And so then I went and I was really glad that she confirmed that I should go. I had two confirmations. Go. You need to go. So I went. And thankfully, you had invited me. Um, four weeks in, it was like, it was such an eye-opening experience because, you know, I've, I've been in real estate six years, but yet very limited, very limited on what I really saw in the business. And uh, it was just like, this was, it was just, it was amazing to tell you the truth because it opened my eyes to KW. <clears throat> And what KW stands for, and how they, how they, how they want you to build a better use, so you can build a better business, so you can touch other people's lives, and that meant a lot to me. And so, four weeks in, it was obvious that I would go to KW. It was just a matter of timing, um, and it wasn't anything that was on my radar. So, when you're out there talking to your friends that might be at other agencies, or even here that has never been to Bowl. I can't tell you what a life-changing experience it was for me. It wasn't just, it, it wasn't just business-wise. It reminded me of who I was again. It reminded me of what I had to bring to the table, the value I brought. And it changed my life, changed my business. And I just can't tell you how much we as a company need to share that with other people. Didn't it give you confidence to try out for something? Yes. <laughs> America's Got Talent? No. Oh. <laughs> no, it's the Leadership Academy. Oh. <laughs> um, no, I, um, I've been encouraged by two different people at the board to please, please sign up for the Leadership Academy. And any of you, if you're not involved at the board, I need to tell you that you should be because it, we are part of a big community and these people are our friends and they're the people that we work with every day. Um, so I signed up, I filled out the application. It's a long application and you have to tell them why you think you belong on this committee, why they should pick you for the Leadership Academy. Because of Bold, the way I answered the questions, the way I did the interview, the way I did all of it, I know that's why I was chosen. So I just want to tell you, if you need a boost of confidence and you need to know who you are again and you want to get your priorities straight again, I can't rave about bold any more than that. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Do you agree? A hundred percent agree. And here's my thought. So, by the way, Jen Davis, who we know has stepped down, it's not a secret, has stepped down from her, her um, role as vice president of MAPS, yesterday signed up to take bold. Uh, yeah, what's Someone who does not need to do it, but who helped realized. write it, but wrote it because she knows the results will show up in her life. And here's the really interesting thing, because I'm going to challenge everybody to do it. I'm doing it again. Why? Because I want to, because I know all the same things. I know the impact it's going to have on my life, and I know the results that I will get. Is it uncomfortable? Yes. yes. So I'm going to tell every single person here to sign up. Now, here's the reality. Those of you who have signed up, who's already signed up? <clears throat> okay, outstanding. Congratulations. The rest of you are sitting here and you're thinking, I know I need to do it because you know the results that it will get you. And then what happens if going back to the Mel Robbins speech of heard, you then start talking yourself out of it. You, you know you need to go because you know the results that you'll get either through business or personal or any other aspect of your life will be greater at the end of it than before you took it. Is that true? Does everybody believe that? True. So what the hell are you waiting on? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can sign up for it yet. Guess what? Well, that's okay, I, that's fair. Mark. Mark's never missed one, so I'm not. I'm not beating up on Mark. But yeah. Oh, look, they're signing up for it. Here's the thing. Oh, really? And here's my point. Do not allow your let's, negative internal. Let's thank our voice. three people real quick. They keep talking. Well, let's thank them for being up here. Okay. Do not let your negative internal voice talk you out of doing something that you know will get you more results than you have right now. Business, personal, whatever. I don't understand why you would. If that voice is talking to you right now because you're worried what somebody else might think or what it might cost or et cetera, talk to us. We'll get through that. We know the results will come from this and everyone deserves more of what they want. So we believe in it so much. We're saying thank you, Dan. Yep. We're setting up a payment plan. 
So if you want to do it, it's $7.99 to do it. So you can do four hundred and three ninety nine on two closings between now and November. Really and remember, any talking out here goes out to the interweb. And also, if you're a first time bold person, if you've never done it before, you can earn four hundred dollars of that back. And if you're online, I think Nicole's got a link there where you can go ahead and sign up for it. So I'm asking you to do one of two things: either commit to yourself and sign up one of these two different ways, or if you're not quite there yet and you're thinking I, I probably should. Sign up for first steps. First steps is a free day to see what it's like and feel it out. And if you know somebody from another brokerage, they're more than welcome to this. You don't have to be a real estate agent to do this. We've had vendors, affiliates, everybody do this. When I first started, we had four lenders going through it. Yeah. So this How much is, is for them. So Same price. Same price. Oh, for, for non-KW agents, yeah. we do have a couple packages where they can get it a little cheaper, but we got to visit with them and, and they have a couple commitments they got to make to okay. them. But this will change your business. It'll change. That's why we showed Dan from the beginning of his business, Elise in the middle of her business, and Jennifer changing life stuff. It will change all kinds of things with you. So we're excited about that. We're going to have more info coming in a couple of weeks, but we wanted to let you know about this now to get it on your calendars. It's going to be great. So we've gotten a little long. We're going to go past 1030 today because this stuff is important. But there was a property tax law. Was it was a Senate bill, SB. I thought that's what the SB stood this was for. <laughs> And so here's what's great about our government. They make a rule. <laughs> and then they let everyone else figure out how it works. <laughs> and, or, and then it's needs us change and change and change. So today, Mr. Allen Ice has joined us. He is our, he's appointed to the Office of Green County Collector of Revenue by Governor Parson in March of 2021. He was elected to a four-year term of office in November 22. He's a former member of the Missouri House of Representatives and served as a director and president of the Rockwood Board of Education. His private sector experience includes engineering and strategic projects in the petrochemical industry. Mr. Eisen holds a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering from Texas A&M and a Master of Science from, and Business Admin from Washington University. So he is our collector in Greene County. And the, what you're going to be talking about is Greene County wide. And we have people in multiple counties listening also. So it's the same. It's the same. Awesome. In a lot of ways. Yep. So please, let's give a round of applause for Mr. Eisen. Okay, thank you. Um, if you have any questions at any point in time, don't hesitate to let me know because this is, a, I like to say there are a lot of moving parts to this and it can get a little complicated. That's around business cards. Okay, that's more because I thought it might be short. If you have any questions, which you probably will once you start to think about this, is, oh, how do we do this? Um, so how many people in the room or have heard of Senate Bill 190, Senate Bill 756, think they know enough to be dangerous? Um, okay. I'll give you a little bit of history to get you from where it started to where we are now. Uh, last year, the General Assembly passed Senate Bill 190. The intent of 190 was to freeze real estate taxes. <coughs> this is statewide, so if you're from another county, um, this could apply to you, to freeze real estate taxes. Um, but before I go further into this process, let me tell you, there are misconceptions out there and there are two really important things that you need to know so you can explain to people. Some people think when they apply and are accepted, deemed eligible for the credit, they will no longer pay real estate taxes. How many remember the phrase about death and taxes? You will always pay real estate taxes until you're either dead or you sell your parcel. So, Please help debunk that because there'll be some very unhappy people in November when they get their bills that I no longer have to pay real estate taxes. The second is they think my office is going to issue a check for their credit. There will be no checks coming out of my office <laughs> for this, none whatsoever. Um, I'll get into the process a little later. So Senate Bill 190 was passed by the General Assembly. Um, there are three, generally three things that are required to be deemed eligible. One is, this is your primary residence. If you own other homes in other states and those are your primary residence, you do not qualify. If you own multiple places, if you have rental property, if you have a house here at the lake, you get one primary residence. Secondly, you have to be the taxpayer of record. So that's pretty easy to do through my office. I'll print a receipt. You should have a receipt you file if, if you 
have, if you don't go the standard deduction, shows a you or the taxpayer record. And third, you need to be the owner of the parcel. That is determined, or the best way that I'm aware of is through the deed. Your deed will have your name, if you're married, you and your spouse's name, or maybe just your name. So you need to prove those three things to be deemed eligible. Um, now, one of the other requirements in 190, which created a lot of heartache, is you had to be social security eligible. Most people have no idea what that really means. I certainly didn't until we got into this. Um, and social security eligible means you have to be, and I'll just touch on this because this is about to go away. You have to be 62 and you have to have 40 credits in the social security system, which means 40 quarters, which means 10 years of working and contributing to social security. Uh, that is still the process. Um, again, Senate Bill 190 was passed last year and there were a lot of concerns from the county because it, we wanted clarification and we wanted consistency. We, the counties, want to implement this consistently because otherwise we'll be open to a lawsuit. Christian County does it one way and Green County does it, does it another. Okay, here comes the lawsuit. And there are a number of things that unfortunately Senate Bill 190 did not address. So Missouri Association of Counties formed a task force, uh, had 11 elected officials with counties on the task force from around the state, different types of offices. I was the chairman of that task force. So we put together the report, gave it to the legislature, and tactfully said, would you please address this? And for the most part, they did. And that ended up in Senate Bill 756, which passed the legislature. It's on the governor's desk, and we all believe he will sign it sometime in the next couple of weeks. He has until June or July the 14th to either, really has until July 14th to veto. Because in the state of Missouri, either the governor signs the bill. If he doesn't sign it, unlike at the federal level, if, he, if the governor doesn't sign it, it becomes law. <clears throat> so the, really, the only action the governor needs to take is to veto. But we believe part, Governor Parson will sign Civil 756. Now, the 756 does not become law until August the 28th. It's one of those deals that we have to deal with. The biggest change, again, is 756. For the most part, was it eliminated that Social Security requirement, which was confusing and a headache for everybody concerned, just to age 62. Much easier to prove your age versus getting the information required from SSA to prove your Social Security eligible. Um, and again, if any questions, don't hesitate to ask. So uh, the, the county is in the process, the commission's in the process of drafting a new order in anticipation of 756 passing, and, and we, the county, are, are changing some of our processes to make it easier for people who want to apply, because it's, it's been a little bit of a pain, but this is a learning curve for all of us. There was no owner's manual that was issued with 190 or 756. So we the county is working together to try to simplify the process for taxpayers. Um, you come in in person in the historic courthouse in room 110 is now where someone else to turn in paper. They go to 110. They can also do it online. Either my website, which is countycollector.com, has a link to the application, or you can go to the county clerk's website where also the application can be found, can be printed, it can be turned in via email or in person. So whatever works. Um, so the process, the intent, as I said, the intent of the bill was to freeze real estate taxes. In primary residence, you meet all the other qualifications, freeze real estate taxes going forward for senior citizens. There are a couple of exceptions, um, and this is part of included in Assembly 756, if someone builds, they add a two-car garage or deck. 190 was silent on what happens. So you could, in effect, tear down your 1,000-square-foot square house, build a 10,000-square-foot mega mansion, and your taxes would never go up because that's the way 190 was written. <laughs> well, there's some creative people that would have done that, too. And that's, like I said, legislation is messy, and this one's really messy. So 756 addressed that. If there's any construction improvements, the assessor should make note of that, and that addition will be, and that a physical addition will be in addition to the tax. So it'll be frozen, but that will be added on to that base amount. Um, we get too deep into the weeds on this, I don't think. So as I said, 756 should be signed by the governor. It should be, it will become law August the 28th. 
we, the county, will begin accepting applications prior to that August 28th that reflect the intent of 756. In Greene County, the deadline to apply is September 30th. Christian County was June 30th. And that's one of, one of those flexibility issues that whatever that county decides is what that county decides. Now, in order to implement the bill, and I think there are 114 counties around the state, I will say about 15%. So about 15 to 18 have actually implemented it. There are two ways to in, engage in and um, drive this forward. Either the commission or the governing body has to issue an ordinance saying, we are hereby implementing 7190 or 756, or it can go to a vote of the people, which is what happened in Boone County, which is where Columbia is located. Um, petition initi initiative was instituted, and of course it passed overwhelmingly in Boone County. So there were a number of counties, and I don't know if people operate in, in the Collar counties and Green, a number of counties were hesitant to do that. They wanted to see what would happen, and 756 is the result. So, Again, it's up to the either governing body or the citizens to initiate a petition initiative. As you can imagine, it's very popular for some folks. Um, again, the intent is taxes are frozen going forward, but for some, I will call them unusual events, but events that happen on an irregular basis. Most people don't add a two car garage and add a deck to their home. Um, the, the process as it will happen is um, individuals are applying through the county clerk and that varies from county to county in uh, green or in Christian County, uh, Ted Nichols, who's the county collector, the county collector's office is accepting applications. So it could be assessor, could be clerk, could be collector. Just depends on how the county wants to engage with 190 and 756. So individuals turn in their applications, their supporting documentation, it's reviewed. Uh, a letter, right now again, this is all something to change. A letter being sent out to tell people good news, you've been deemed eligible. Now, what will happen then? And we're going to have, I'm going to have a lot of really unhappy people. <laughs> now, that's the way it is. <clears throat> For the 2024 tax statement, which you will receive no matter where you live in this state, that real estate tax statement will show your tax bill for 2024. Let's say it's $1,000 based on the assessed value and the levies in the districts, the taxing political subdivisions in which you live. So you owe $1,000. Below that, by law, in both bills, I have to show the credit on the statement. That way, the taxpayer knows, oh, this is the credit I'm receiving. Well, everyone's credit who applies and is deemed eligible for 2024, anyone want to guess what the credit amount is going to be this year? Zero. Zero. You have to have a difference between a tax, a, a base year and a future year. There'll be people who are expecting <laughs> some sort of windfall and their credit is zero because I have no other year against which to do the math. Future year minus base year equals credit. So it'll be $1,000 minus zero is $1,000. So again, just so you're aware because there are some things that you need to be aware of too um, in closing. Now next year in Missouri, every odd year is a reassessment year. So 2025 is a reassessment year and everybody's assessed value is going to go up, but for some really unusual cases. So when those 2025 tax statements come out for people who applied this year and were deemed eligible, there will be a credit on that bill. So if it goes from $1,000 to 1,500, which it probably won't, then there will be a $500 line that shows credit amount owed, 1,500, credit 500, tax due 1,000. Now, where you really need to be aware, in my opinion, that others express interest is, I bought and sold homes. You get a stack. We all know a stack of things this high. One of those line items is how much are the taxes on this home? If a senior citizen who's deemed eligible is selling that property, what's going to show up on there if that amount is pulled from my system? It will show that frozen amount. And it doesn't matter who's buying it because this credit is not transferable to the new owner, even if they're qualified in every way, shape, and form. That tax amount is going to be reset to the current year. But when you look at that statement, you, you or the title companies, whomever, puts that 
documentation together, you're going to look at that tax and say, oh, it's only a thousand. Well, if it's after 2025, it could be 1500. So that's a watch out. You need to be aware. Now, if you look at the, the history, um, it'll be pretty obvious. 10 years from now, it's a thousand dollars a year. Okay. That's a senior citizen. And the taxes for the new owner will not be $1,000. Now, if they qualify, they'll apply. And it, again, is reset at that new base. Yes, sir. Will lenders have the ability to contact your office to get an estimation of what the taxes would be? Um, or? We don't estimate taxes for obvious reasons because mm -hmm. our number will be wrong and then we're in trouble. But we will mm -hmm. share with you. And you can actually go online. Again, countycollector.com. You can search for the current parcel. You pull it up. You can actually print a statement. Um, I don't think you can see the history, though. I don't think that's public. But if you call and ask, we're more than happy to say, yeah, this parcel, the real estate taxes are frozen, and they've been frozen for X years. And on the statement, it shows what the tax would be, but for the credit. So we can tell you what the current taxes would be. So you have a, for the most part, an order of magnitude of, of what is due for the new owner. Yes, sir. All right. So back to this $1,000 example, because that's easy. And then, so... $500 credit, and then the, this, this individual owns a house for five years, so it's still a thousand. And then we sell it to another individual who actually qualifies, but the tax will go to whatever it is at year seven or eight or whatever it is. So let's say the actual tax would be 2000. Then that person coming in who was paying maybe a thousand because they had the credit is now going to pay 2000. And they can freeze it there if they apply. But it'll be frozen at 2000. That is correct. What the hell? So there is no <laughs> rental. I know. Sorry about that. You keep your, keep your life. <laughs> the, the issue is you have to be the owner and it is parcel specific. Here's one talking about off the wall examples. And one of the customer service folks told us so somebody called, they own two parcels adjoining. And we didn't get a lot of details. So, like, one has the residence. And in Missouri, the most acres you can, well, Green County, the most acreage you get as a residence is five acres. So if you own 100,000 acres, five acres is residential. Everything else is ag. This individual wanted to move the line. I'm not sure if either expand or contract the parcel upon which the residence was located. And the question is, do they need to do it right away or can they wait until after the application deadline, September 30th? Like, hmm, that's really interesting. Never thought about that. And as we talk through this, the answer is, again, individual and parcel. Once you either combine or split, there is a new legal description that is a different parcel. That's not going to happen often. But again, that this credit is not transferable. You can't take it with you as a senior. I'm buying a new home, and I want to apply that credit. You have to apply, again, parcel-specific and again, the person buying it is no parcel specific. Yes, sir. What about the when you have couples age difference where the yeah, we, gentleman may pass and the, that that uh, that is something we've actually thought about. Um, my, I use my parents as an example because my father's ten years older than my mother. Let's say my father's sixty-two, my mother's fifty-two. My father applies this year, deemed eligible for all the circumstances. In eight years, he dies. My mother's not sixty-two; she's sixty. She does not qualify. She's not 62. That tax is going to be reset at the current year level, which is going to be a real painful conversation. How would the assessor do that? You have to apply every year, don't you? You have to apply every year. We need to confirm. Now, you have to go through the full, the applications is, is front and back, two pages, pretty simple. You apply every year? Yes. You have to actually reapply. We talked about to make, again, to make this as simple as possible because we need to verify that you st you're still alive, first of all, and you still own your property. Now we're talking through how to do this because we don't have to worry about this to 2025. But what method do we use? Do we send a postcard and that's what we're talking about? How do we communicate to the taxpayer that they need to reapply? Just check the box, no changes from my original application, sign it, but no proof of life. <laughs> no, 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 signing, you're not quite. 
inspired and he's trying to think how it's going to work. Thinking outside the box. Yeah, thinking outside the box. AI will take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, it will. We had a question online. Yes. What about how to prorate for the current seller that has been adjusted? Yep, that's a question we've talked about. Um, I use the example senior citizen sells the house June 30th. They owe $1,000. New buyer, doesn't matter how old they are, do not qualify. They owe $2,000. Actually, we had a collector's meeting a week and a half ago Monday. Uh, we talked a little bit about this. Uh, so what is the tax bill that I send? Do I send the $1,000? Do I send the $2,000? Or do I split the difference because $500 for the first six months and $1,000 for the next six months? Do I send a bill for $1,500? That's one of those county by county issues. Uh, what I'm going to do is send a bill for $1,000 because the programming becomes much more complicated when you're prorating over 365 days of the year. That's going to be a mess. <clears throat> so the new buyer gets a windfall, if you will. The following year, the taxes get reset. So that's how we're going to do it in Green County. You yes, probably need to have a that's meeting with all the title company people. Exactly. I mean, because they're the ones that are going to be doing that for us. And I'm, I'm more than happy. I'm more than happy to come back here because after you leave, you're starting to think, ooh, what about this? Or what about that? Because yeah. you deal with this in reality. I deal with it conceptually. So I'm more than happy to come back. If you know title companies, you say, hey, you really ought to get this guy in. You really need to understand what's going on with this. Again, more than happy to explain this because what's going to happen happens all the time. Title companies, real estate agents, whatever, people are going to be ignorant of this and they're going to create a real problem. And then someone's going to call smiles. Alan, can you, can you fix this? I didn't realize this. I'm going to say, no, I do not have the authority to change the bill. I mean, I have some wiggle room, like this 1,000, 1,500, 2,000. I have wiggle room, but there are things that I cannot change. And if you have not applied or you did not reapply, there's nothing I can do to fix that. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Us as agents, the way I see that it affects us is the fact that when we're looking at a listing on the MLS, it's going to tell us what the taxes are. So if we see something that is lower taxes than what we think others around it have been, then we have to be careful about sharing that sharing that information with our people too how do you explain that yeah and how do you explain that you exactly to, you'd have to pull the statement and see what the credit is ultimately yes you, you don't have any choice Not so it's use one more CRS. step yeah it's one more yeah. step we need to do that's what i'm saying though you, because you typically then go to a title company to pull that i guess you could mm -hmm. pull it yourself yeah that's like corey yeah. said you're in i just think that i mean here's my take on it as a broker somebody's going to get sued Oh man! Yeah, mm -hmm. because of the you know, <laughs> let's say it's you know a thousand dollars here, but then the new buyer comes in and you know they we have it. it on our MLS detail sheet. They see it, they think it's a thousand. They go to the title company, don't pay attention to the closing statement. November, they pay the taxes that are due, and all of a sudden, so wait a minute, it was a thousand. Now it's twenty five hundred, maybe or three thousand okay. or four thousand. Don't count sure. cash mark. Yeah, credit goes up. Yeah. Yeah. Every assessment year. It goes up. So, in for people who are eligible 2025, this is not going to be much for you. Yeah. There'll be some real unhappy people. I thought I was going to save money. Well, come back in 10 or 20 years, and then you'll notice a sizable credit after 20 years of reassessment. But the first go around, it's not going to be. Yeah, I've owned my house 24 years. So, think about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I'm not paying $100 the, anymore. People would have to add into the MLS details. Say, yes. Can we add, like, that would be, that's exactly what I was hoping for. Yeah. Like, can you add, like, in a disclosure, is this, are the taxes frozen? Yeah. Is this exactly. in a frozen statement? I like somebody at the, on the tech committee at the board or MLS, you'd want, you know, we also have Mr. President over here. I know, I was yeah. like, Mike, like, taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like that on the MLS detail, because it wouldn't necessarily be on the seller's disclosures, because that's all about the property, but it on some sort of disclosure, on the MLS detail, so that'd be out that so it's a check, oh, check box yeah. or something yeah. to at least go look. Is frozen the correct term, though? It is. Yeah. It is. You think frozen is the correct term? There's been a lot of discussion. Well, why did they melt it? Why did the Why did the General Assembly just freeze the assessed value? Yeah, that would kind of result in the same thing. But the way the process works, and they did this on purpose, which I think was smart. Some of the other things they didn't think through very well, like the Social Security thing. Process is the assessor assesses every odd year. 
the, the taxing jurisdictions send the levies and they have to roll back based on Hancock and all this other stuff, send the levies to the clerk. I get what's called the tax book from the clerk. He has to deliver to my office the tax book. That's the list of all the taxes due by all, every individual who either owns real estate and or personal property in Green County. Well, that middle step, the, the levy setting, the way that works is all the taxing jurisdictions are now calling the assessor's office, or will do soon, what is our new assessed value? Because their levy is either driven up or down. One of the figures is what's the assessed value? Because if the assessed value goes up, which it does, they can't roll their rates up. Their requirements under Hancock. So if the assessed value is frozen for those individuals, assessed value would not go up as much that gives the political, the tax and subdivisions the ability to raise levy in more than what they would otherwise or reduce them less than otherwise, which means people who don't qualify are paying the bill. I mean, that, that we're getting way into the weeds on how the taxing process works. So that's why I think that's why the, the, the senator did that so that, in fact, you can read it and it says, they have to set, in effect, they have to set their levy based on the assessed value. There is no frozen assessed value, so they can't play that, what I call as a levy game. There's value to aging. There is value to aging. Yeah. yeah. It's good to get old, folks. <laughs> it's like the senior discount. Yes, ma'am. In the back. If I missed it, what are the requirements for people to actually apply for this? Like high level, or is there a place you go online to find that? Um, you can go online either to my website. Oh, does that card have a, I think it has my, just countycollector.com. Okay. There is a link to the form. Um, oh, I should have brought some of those. I've got, we'll get these out. This has all the info. Yeah. And if you need yes. more, just let me know. And I'll okay. just drop them off. I've got a lot. Um, or to the, uh, the, the Green County clerk. I, I can't tell you what his website is, but either one has the application. The application is actually going to change, hopefully to make it a little more simple. Um, and the current application only has one signature line. We're going to go to two signature lines for that husband and wife issue because if let's say the again my parents my father's signs because my mother's not old enough and again let's say she ages in which she will to 62 but she has never applied my father is the only applicant so when he dies even if my mother's 62 four, six, eight, whatever she has never applied so we're putting two signature lines and we, we have to talk about how do we handle this with the younger spouse who's going to age in? What do we do? How do we determine that? So it's just the details like that that create problems. Like how do we think about this in order to avoid me having a really unpleasant conversation about why did you, especially after 10 years, why did your taxes go from 1,000 to 2,000? So, yes, sir. Jim. No, I want to bring it up. Oh, oh yeah. no. <laughs> what? I just you. No, I just, you know, you, I mean, you, you build your house, you live in it 24 years, you pay taxes on it 24 times in a row. So I always thought that was the stupidest thing ever. I just, and, and personal property taxes on cows, for God's sake. I mean, it's just dumb stuff that, I mean, I get it. The government has to collect the taxes, but it just doesn't make any sense to me. I don't mind paying for schools and roads, but just for my house 24 times, I just some Or more, or more. <laughs> yes, sir. So, so you're only being reassessed every two years, right? But you have to apply or they have to, I can't do it. They have to apply every year because it's the credit, even though they're not being reassessed every year, they can't just do it once and skip a year and then. Right, again, the, the two reasons to ensure that the property owners are still alive, because that mm -hmm. does happen, and that they still own their property. So part of it is verification on our part. We have some due diligence. And if you read on the application, if someone falsifies the application, I forget what misdemeanor, I think it's a class C, and it's just not worth falsifying your application to, to get a credit. Yes, sir. If you're on it, will you get reminders each year? Is it going to be? We're talking about how to do that. And I'll just say that it's not the county's responsibility to notify. Nowhere is that our responsibility. But what's going to happen is grandma's going to forget her taxes are going up. She's calling KY3, and here we go. 
<laughs> That's not going to be a pleasant idea. I can explain it, but it's just not going to be pleasant. So we're thinking about what can we do, what should we do to remind people, please reapply. And again, this doesn't happen until next year, so we have time to work through that process. That happened until next to, year. Excuse me? That happened until next year. 2025. That's not an immediate. Real, the immediate is, I'm going to get this state fixed. So we can upload the individuals who are deemed eligible to put that credit line of zero dollars on their statement because that is required by both bills. So that's the immediate challenge uh, and to make it a little easier. So they should that. apply this year though. If they're eligible. Right. They have to be right. They're right. right, but they should apply this year even though the credit won't be yeah. there. Right. Oh, no, you need to set that base year, that eligible yeah, year, right. the frozen year, the credit year. They need to, if they're 62 and meet all the requirements, apply this year. Now, some people, and we talked about this, some people will turn 62 and get deadline September 30th. Some people turn 62 October 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, next three months. They can apply for the current year because they will be eligible in 2024. Again, that's the nice thing about the initial year is it's zero for everybody. Mm -hmm. So a couple of things to figure out for next year. Yes, sir. So once this gets going, um, if they apply and they, they get the credit the first year or whatever year they first apply, mm -hmm. and they're in, so they go to reapply every other year. But the, the so process year. where for the reapplication, as long as nothing major has changed, you know, nothing's changed, that application can be short or it's just a, hey, nothing's changed, boom, I reapply. Well, we're thinking of postcard, box, nothing has changed from my original application. Mm -hmm. Check the box, you sign it, send it back. That that closes that verification loop. Again, people sell, as you well know, they move to other counties. We just we need to know is this parcel still a, a valid? Should it continue to receive that tax credit? Again, try to make this just as easy as we can for everybody. And again, we're working through that process on how do we do that, yes, sir. So if you've got a, a homeowner. And you've got your both people signing, right? Because you're gonna have your two signature lines. Do both people need to be on the title then? So, like, you got a husband and wife, but it's only the husband's name. Husband and wife both sign, but she's she's gonna need to get put on the title she for that to, because you have to prove ownership and that deed. And there are some that's like that. It's one of the two spouses. It could be a, a, a divorce or remarriage. All those things go on. But if if you are not an owner, you don't. Qualify. Right. So if this is in a trust, you can just have one person sign for the trust, but if the wife is also in the trust and still qual makes the qualifications. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, we are working our way through this trust process. That has turned out to be a, a headache for everyone. Because a trust, a document, it, everyone is different because it's all up to the lawyer to decide what how many pages they want to stuff in. It's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think where we are <laughs> is, is just proof of ownership, a deed with that name. Because you get a trust, it's amazing what some people will do with trusts. Like, this makes no sense for us. There's some that have a trust for the trust. That's interesting. And there's, there's some that don't name trustees, which kind of hard to find. So, we're going to, right now, we're, we're transitioning, and I think we're just going to go to the deed to prove ownership, and the owners are paying the bill, but your name, if a husband and wife, both names need to be on that deed, because if not, you'll qualify. As you can tell, this is still getting figured out as it goes. Um, has this been helpful to have? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you very well, much. Well, real quick. <laughs> 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 you knew that was the <laughs> Well, when I saw all his qualifications, I mean, all his education, all that, that you need that much intelligence to be able to do Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do. You need a couple more degrees for us to understand it. <laughs> I didn't realize that's how I got into this. I want to go to that, whatever that was, where you had to figure out, why did Bowl? you do this? Yeah, but no, but what was it? Quantum leap. Quantum leap. I should go. Why did I get into politics? What is wrong with my brain? <laughs> you should go. You should. It's a great question. I'm afraid I might get an answer I don't like. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Well, again, I'm more than happy. Like I said, when you leave, you're gonna because of this is what you do. You start thinking, "Ooh, what about this? What about that?" And that's part of what we, me, I want to know these situations so we can not just anticipate but be prepared for. Because there will be things that happen. We didn't think about that, so now what do we do? But again, I'm more than happy to come back in. So we might have Mr. Ice back closer to time when it's rolling over because I'll have a little bit more answers on that. Um, in the meantime.
But what are your ahas? Here's the two things I'm thinking of. Sarah, <laughs> Sarah, are you doing a client event in your neighborhood? I am, yeah. It yeah. looks like we're probably going to move it back after the August 28th, uh, just because of the changes. But uh, yeah, we are, we're advertising to our uh, neighborhood. More than half of my neighborhood are seniors who own their homes. So it seemed like a great opportunity to reach out to them and say, hey, we're going to go ahead and meet in a central location in our neighborhood. I'll have a notary there so they can get their paperwork notarized and that way they're ready to freeze it in at this rate. It's just a service and it's a way for me to reach out to my neighbors and you know get them to, to know who I am. So, again, you being the person who has information that's so valuable to your clients. So use this as your reach out. As we get into bold, use it for your DTD2. Um, so this is gonna be great information to help go forward. I will send the note to the MLS board saying, hey, we might need to look at adding this box on there. Um, so just, just be, the big thing is be aware and realize they're figuring out as they go too. So. so what would be, if I said, oh, what is this? What would be the quick elevator pitch I would say to somebody? If someone had no idea, what would be like the quick two to three sentence? That way we knew to say, contact you for more information. Um, are you aware that there is a credit, again, real estate. Some people think it's personal in real estate. Do you have the opportunity to apply for and receive a real estate a freeze on your real estate taxes? Are you aware of that? Okay. And that everyone dies will light up. Mm -hmm. yeah. awesome. yeah. so. Apply for a freeze on your real estate taxes. Are you aware? There you yeah. go. There's your opening call. Does anybody got a meeting is a wellness coach with Keller Williams talking about how to avoid burnout. Has anybody ever gotten through burnout? So I think that's going to be a great resource for everybody next week. Please get us your bold applications. We want to try and get that lined up today. And please come back with all of your fingers next week. Okay? Do not lose anything you're not supposed to. Have a great week. Thank I know you we just had to increase the real estate revolution to 150 because we've already hit over the 130. So again, if you know somebody that wants to come to the panel, July 12th, get signed up, share it with them because we're going to hit those. And if you have your bold sheets filled out, please turn them in to me before you go upstairs. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks, Alan. Oh, Thank, you. Thank you. Okay, let's find out your name really quick. But I'm like, 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 I'm